Hey folks, it's Jim, it's Julie, it's March! It is! Which means it's Marvelous March. Or as I call it, pain in my butt, because I have to read Marvel March. That's okay, just wait for October. Then it's pain in my butt, because yeah. I have to read yeah. all alternative yeah. October. Oh, just wait until uh, con season when I get so many books from so many small press people that are going to be, well... I'm excited, I actually... All joking aside, I actually do enjoy Alternative October mm -hmm. because I get to experience things that I don't see otherwise, typically. And it's one of the reasons I like Marvelous March and yeah. DC December, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever month we're going to oh, dedicate to DC. <laughs> that's September. DC. Yeah. I uh, well, the third uh, the big DC, event thing. The is third coming. big DC yeah. event is coming in. This September, so... Now, like I said, mind you, I don't generally read Marvel DC, but I generally do know what's going on. Yes. So I can appreciate them in their own way. I'm just not a huge fan. Yeah. Um, oh. But we've got six comic reviews to get to. Let's get to it, shall yes. we? Yes. Starting off with Magneto number one. And despite having lost the majority of his powers and being on the lam, he, Magneto is spending his days very productively. He is hunting down humans who are killing mutants. I thought he would have started with Taco Bell. No. Hmm. No. I could see him maybe starting a large appliance store. Saves on lo labor costs. Magneto. He doesn't have to have big strong guys moving stuff around. He can Magneto's do it himself. Magneto's magnetic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. Hmm. Um, so, while he's off hunting these people who are killing mutants... Somebody else is keen to what he's up to and is laying traps for him. So, I don't know what more to say about this book. I was not fond of the art. The story didn't captivate me. But if you enjoy the hunt and chase sort of aspect, then I think you would love this. So, or if you're a huge Magneto fan. But otherwise... I wasn't captivated by it. I I will probably check out the number two just to see who's behind this stuff, but otherwise... Scott Summers. Maybe. <laughs> it's always I, Scott Summers. I anticipate anything jerk. from Scott these days. All right. Next up, we have Thunderbolts number 20, which is No Mercy number one. Yes. So, um, so. this falls in to the all-new Marvel Now, yep. and they're, they've they labeled it so that uh, readers know there's a jumping-on point. Yep. And in this one, the all-powerful madwoman Mercy has gone too far slaughtering innocent people to fu fulfill her mission of mercy. Yeah, that sounds hmm. merciful, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Does it so, ever. So, the Thunderbolts turn to Johnny Blaze, the original Ghost Rider, to help send Mercy to hell. Of course, it all goes wrong. <laughs> Everything else goes there except Mercy. Pretty much. They okay. all they all go to hell. Yeah. So, this came out a while ago, probably about a month or two now. Mm -hmm. um, and it, as Julie said, it's a jumping on point for yep. new readers for Thunderbolts. And this is not bad. This is actually pretty funny. It's because um, it's Deadpool. It's got Deadpool and there's a few good Deadpool jokes. But I think the one that had me laughing the most was a scene in which Johnny Blaze is talking to one of his managers and he talks about how bad his last two movies were. <laughs> <laughs> to which I heartily laugh because there's not much worse in the superhero sphere movie-wise than the two Ghost Rider films. I don't know, I enjoyed the first one. Yeah, the I first one had its good seconds of film, but I haven't that's seen about the second it. one, but I enjoyed the first one. Ghost Rider pisses fire in the second one. Huh. Maybe yeah. Nick, maybe Nick Cage needs to see a doctor about that one. <laughs> probably. It would probably help. Alright. Anyway. The art in here is really good. The storyline is a hoot. Uh, even if you're not up to date on the Thunderbolts or who they are, they give you a good reasoning behind what they're doing and who they are so it's a good jumping on point for any new readers and i kind of enjoyed it all right next up for me today is moon knight number one and in this one 
Mark Spector, a.k.a. Moon Knight, is a mercenary who died in Egypt under the statue of the god Gonshu. Or Khonshu, sorry, my apologies. And my apologies if I muddled that in any way, shape, or form. So, after dying, he gets bored and decides, why not do it again? So, the same night, he stands up in the shadow of the statue that he died under and takes up the Moon Knight mantle, where he goes after baddies and he does a lot of cool things. The book does a far better job of describing it, and I want you to read it because it's an interesting story, though I did not appreciate the stylistic choices they made with the art. I will agree. Uh, some of the stylistic choices that they made for the Moon Knight character yes. uh, were pretty damn bad in an artistic yeah. sense, Bas and it just didn't make sense. Basically what happened is the entire book is in color, except it looks like Moon Knight, where he was done purely in black and white, and I really feel as though I would have preferred seeing Moon Knight with the shadows, yeah. and I just feel as though... It just feels incomplete. Exactly, yeah. Like, it's not finished yet. But, that aside, it's an interesting story. And I'm really excited to see more about Moon Knight, a character I know next to nothing about. So, if you're looking for something new, absolutely you should check out Moon Knight. He's a good character with a lot of history. Um, yes. And there's been some really great creators that have been on board the book over the years. So. And he, he does have a ton of history. Oh, yeah. Oh, I should mention, guys, that uh, he's back in New York City. And in this book, he was working with the NYPD to hunt down a slasher. Hmm. Yeah, so it was a really interesting story, and much like She-Hulk, this was a story that told its story, wrapped it up in one book, which was really nice. Which is generally a nice thing to do. Yeah, it's just it's just a nice feeling to be able to say, oh, that's a good story, and now here's this other cool, interesting thing about the character. I might want to continue this next month. Yeah, it was like watching an episode of something. It was really nice. Yeah, it's always good to have a story that's self-contained and you can jump on at any point. Exactly. All right. So speaking of New York, let's go to New York with the Fantastic Four. <coughs> or all new Marvel Now Fantastic Four, Volume 5, Number 1. <laughs> Sorry, Leonard. <coughs> anyway, in this one, the Fantastic Four embark on a strange mission and are met with an untimely end. Oh, how that's quick. Yeah. <laughs> As the Fantastic Four head towards their darkest hour, who or what could possibly be behind their downfall? Mandarin. I don't know. <laughs> Shot in the dark. <laughs> Alright. I've never been a big Fantastic Four fan, but I really enjoyed this book. And I think maybe a little green monster called Fin Fang Foom has something to do with it. Okay, Marvel, we need more Fin Fang Foom. We need more giant monsters. I'm sorry. I, maybe I'm on a kaiju high after the Godzilla trailer and Pacific Rim, but I would like more monsters, please. All right. But as a Fantastic Four book, this is actually a lot of fun. Oh, that's good. Um, Honestly, having known Leonard for as long as I've known him, this is probably the best work I've ever seen him do. It is gorgeously drawn and just, at points, really gets the emotion across that the characters are feeling. Okay. Which is always a good thing, especially when you're looking at the downfall of a team and just how and why they have that downfall. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of flashbacks and flash forwards in here, so it is a little bit muddled. But if you really pay close attention, you won't get lost. So if you are a Fantastic Four fan, do yourself a favor and check this one out. It's a lot of fun. But it needs more Fin Fang Foom. <laughs> Doesn't everything? Yes. We need more giant monsters. All right. Last up for me today is Wolverine and the X-Men number one. I think this is volume two. It might be volume three. We can never be sure. sure. But... In this new volume of Wolverine and the X-Men, Logan has established Jean Grey's School for Gifted Children, but there's a slight problem. Wouldn't it be this be like the fourth time that they've had the school? Because well, yeah. don't they usually get blown up every now and then? Frequently, they, uh, they lose the school. Mark two, but mark three. There's a bigger problem. 
somehow all of the regular staff teachers are all on personal leave at the same time. So, Logan's off in space tracking down uh, some help, and he's left Storm to run the school, and Storm has no teachers, so she's had to start hiring very recent graduates <laughs> who are very green. Oh, and boy. And it just leads to complete and utter chaos at the school. Yeah, but you would never want to go to Principal Storm. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so this was my favorite book of the week. I really, I think you guys should check this out. The art was really good. Great. There were a few places where I was a little bit confused, but I think that's because I haven't read some of the, the outlier books. Yeah. To know exactly what's going on in the X-Men universe at this point in time. But and there's was, always a lot going on in the X-Men universe. Mm -hmm. It was still uh, a really nice book to look at, a good story, and they gave you enough information that while you say to yourself, huh, I have no idea what's going on there, but I still understand and can keep going with the story. So it was really nice. It was really well done. If you're looking for a new X-Men book, absolutely, I would say Wolverine and the X-Men, number one from all new Marvel Now. It was really good. And there's a new student with antlers. Yes, which is neat. Which I just gravitated towards right at the start. I'm looking yeah. through it and it's like, well, that girl has antlers. Um, she works with control and can communicate with animals. So she's Squirrel Girl. Mark Nature two. Girl. Okay. Nature Girl is what uh, one of the students at the academy asked if he could call her. And she didn't object. So. Oh, okay. That I works. think she's going to be Nature Girl. She was an interesting character. I'm looking. I might actually have to follow this to see more about her because mm -hmm. I'd like to know more. I mean, if I gravitate right towards the, just the picture of her, mm -hmm. then it's obviously an interesting she aspect. Was, she was neat. She was a very quiet character. We didn't hear much from her. Mm -hmm. But normally, it's the quiet ones that, that you have to look out for. Yes, yeah. that end up being really interesting. So I'm very excited to see what happens with Nature Girl. All right, and last up this week, we have another one from a little while ago. It's Avengers World number one. This one actually is either from December 24th or the 31st. Yeah, it's from, from quite way a while back, but we're catching up on things we didn't touch on before, so forgive us for that one. Um, in this one, the Avengers are about to be tested like never before. Hmm. In one cataclysmic day, new enemies and monsters... Bing, bang, boom? No, no uh, another giant monster. Huh. Uh, will rise to destroy everything the Avengers have fought to protect. Hmm. All right. As much as I love monsters, and, uh -oh. and this one has literally a monster that's the size of a gigantic continent slash city. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, this book is muddled. Oh. Uh. Very muddled. But you pretty. are focusing on over almost 20 characters. Wow. Here. that's And it goes back and forth between each of these teams. So you're really not sure what to focus on. Mm -hmm. And it makes the book just a tad muddled. That and you do not have a glimpse into what happened before to lead us to this moment. Oh. So it really muddles the situation even more. So The art is nice. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely gorgeous art, I will say. Uh, but <clears throat> the story, as I said, it gets muddled with so many characters that you try to focus on every other page. That's my problem with team books, yeah. is that... But that's why you got to focus on... A couple characters. A couple characters at the max. If you want to do something like this, do it as a 64-page special. Have each section focus on a different team mm -hmm. and what they're battling. Then have it all come together in the end. Yeah. That's how I would do it. But then again, I don't work at Marvel, so who am I to talk? Well, we can only hope, like with Ms. Marvel, that they come back in a later book yeah. and address it. I would hope and so. And clarify some things. Um, but, yeah, if, if you're an Avengers fan, this is going to be probably the big event book that threatens the Avengers universe, as it were, slash Marvel universe. Um, and any book with giant monsters, I'm okay with. <laughs> Even though they don't really address 
just what this thing is. I'm sure um, that they will. No, probably. But as an Avengers book on its own, it's very muddled. And even the artwork can't really save that. So unless you're a gigantic Avengers fan, I can't highly recommend it. But even with the art, it's it's okay. Um, just not worthy of a pickup right away. Maybe wait for the collection when they explain a few more things. Um, all right. As if I'm not confused enough in my writing and storytelling of Avengers, um, we're going to take a little bit of time and go into more Marvel books next week. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to see a certain book, let us know. We'd love to review as much as we can. Mm hmm um, and there's a, still a lot of titles from the last two months that we never touched upon, so if you want to see any of that, let us know. Yeah, please, please. We'd love to be able to tailor the show to give you guys what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, we're going to go get some coffee and tea and <laughs> take a little nap, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Doot.